In the late 80s and throughout the 90s, point-and-click adventure games were all the rage. LucasArts, or Lucasfilm if you want to get pre-1990s about this, dominated the genre with such titles as Maniac Mansion, The Secret of Monkey Island, and Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. But by the time the aughts rolled around, point-and-click adventure games fell by the wayside in favour of newer, more interactive genres that further expanded what video games were mechanically capable of. With the writing on the wall, LucasArts decided to drop it like it's hot, or not so hot in this case and step away from point-and-click games permanently, with Escape from Monkey Island being their last word on the matter. That's where Telltale came in. Frustrated by LucasArts' decision, three of their developers ditched the studio and founded Telltale, which went on to champion narrative-driven adventure games and even succeeded for a time in making them relevant again. Telltale's business strategy from the start was to take existing properties and adapt them into video games using their unique formula, which proved to be a very successful strategy indeed, until it wasn't. The studio underwent restructuring after management continuously exposed workers to a stressful crunch culture to maintain their output, which led to low morale. Ultimately, in October 2018, Telltale was shuttered after filing for bankruptcy, resulting in over 250 employees being let go without notice. Well, Telltale, it is true what they say, the brightest stars burn the fastest, especially the stars with toxic work cultures and poor management." End quote. Oh, and if you are a former Telltale employee watching this video, we love you, and we really hope you landed on your feet. Once the dust settled, LCG Entertainment acquired the majority of Telltale's assets and zapped their good name back to life, announcing The Wolf Among Us 2 and The Expanse, a Telltale series. Despite this, for better or worse, the old Telltale as we knew it is no more, which makes it our solemn duty to rank their games for your entertainment. Before we dig in, here are the ground rules. Rankings are based on a combination of critical reception, popularity, and a smidgen of personal preference. Also, this video would be several hours long and extremely tedious if we ranked every single episode from each game separately, so we're ranking every season as a sum of its parts. We'll also be ignoring collections because we'll be ranking the individual games as their own entries anyway. And finally, we will do our best to steer clear of major spoilers, but ranking Telltale games without discussing their plot would be impossible, so a spoiler warning is in effect throughout. Additionally, we're only including titles developed by Telltale Games, which means that we won't be including the likes of Seven Days to Die, as it may have been published for PS4 and Xbox One by Telltale, but it was developed by a different studio entirely, and let's be honest, it doesn't feel or play anything like a Telltale game anyway. With all of that nice and clear, let's rank them. I'm Ben. And I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here is every Telltale video game ranked from worst to best. Number 33, CSI Fatal Conspiracy, PC, PS3, Xbox 360, and Wii. There are a couple of reasons why we placed CSI Fatal Conspiracy in the last place on our list. Naturally, it's partly down to the fact that Fatal Conspiracy is a terrible game, but mainly it's because Telltale had the audacity to drag the great Lawrence Fishburne into this mess. Unforgivable. Fatal Conspiracy was Telltale's fourth and final stab at making a CSI game, and is also the ninth CSI title overall. What lessons did Telltale learn from that rich back catalogue? None. They learned nothing. This is not only their worst CSI title, but also the worst game in their repertoire. Well, hey. From the off, players are dragged by their ears through the most obnoxious tutorial imaginable, voiced by what sounds like the text-to-speech woman from TikTok. See? Fellow kids, we're cool and hip, we know what a TikTok is, sort of. Players then work their way through five individual cases, which have their own enclosed storyline and mystery to solve, with the fifth and final case tying the previous four together into one overarching story. If of course players can make it that far. If this sounds vaguely interesting to you, then don't get too excited as this was the established format of the CSI games long before Telltale got their hands on the IP. Fatal Conspiracy failed to improve on this overused formula and brought nothing new to the table to justify its own existence. The gameplay itself consists of little more than choosing lines of dialogue and staring intently at DNA samples, and unfortunately both the interrogation and investigation sections lack any depth, making the interactive element of the game a hollow paint-by-numbers experience. 
difference. The game is also severely lacking in the graphics department. The character animations are awkward and the models venture just far enough into uncanny valley to get under your skin. There was one positive for all the diehard CSI fans out there though. A few writers from the TV show were involved in the creation of the story and the game tied in to the tenth season and even included some of its characters. Does this mean that Fatal Conspiracy's story was good? No, but we've got to try and find at least something nice to say. Perhaps Telltale's creativity well ran dry after having already developed three other CSI titles before starting work on Fatal Conspiracy. I know the feeling. It was difficult enough to write more than a sentence about this game, so imagine having to make it. Number 32. Telltale Texas Hold'em PC Poker? I hardly know her. Sorry, let's put the comedy aside for a moment, as poker is a serious game for serious people. Now, in fairness, Telltale Texas Hold'em was Telltale's first release, and it was something of an experiment, as they wanted to test digital distribution as a model for their first adventure game, Bone Out from Boneville. We'll get to that. However, this doesn't protect the title from criticism, as they still took people's money for the privilege of playing it, so it's open season as far as we're concerned. Telltale Texas Hold'em follows Harry Winehead, Boris Crinkle, Theodore Dude Bro, uh, and Grandma Shaky as they compete alongside the player in the Telltale Texas Hold'em tournament. Is the player a spy, taking part as a ruse to get closer to an evil mastermind in order to thwart his dastardly plan? No! It's literally just poker. Please dial your expectations all the way back. The aim of this game is to relieve everybody of their chips and send them packing. It's that simple. The problems with this game are several fold or poker, but let's start with the fact that there are no difficulty options and there's no tutorial. Granted, the opponents do drop hints that might support new players, but don't go into Telltale Texas Hold'em with no prior knowledge of poker and expect to leave ready to hit the big leagues. Ostensibly, the only appeal this title has over other computer-based poker offerings is the company at the table. I say ostensibly because the four AI players won't stop talking and they look like ugly, discarded characters characters from the original Alone in the Dark. After one game, which can be over in as little as 20 minutes, players will have experienced all there is to offer. Dialogue can start repeating as early as a second playthrough, and the audio quality is akin to nails on a chalkboard. Telltale Texas Holder might have been the studio's first foray into the world of poker, but it wasn't their last. You'll just have to wait until later in this list to hear more on that subject. For now, we'll recommend that if you're in the market for some card-based fun, no matter how desperate you are, don't touch Telltale Texas Holder with a 40 Football. All right, number 31. CSI Deadly Intent, PC, Xbox 360, and Wii. Much like the TV series, these CSI games just don't know when to quit. Deadly Intent is the third Telltale CSI game, and much like Fatal Conspiracy, it consists of five cases where players talk with and interrogate NPCs, search crime scenes, and inspect evidence in the lab. Players are tasked with investigating the deaths of a fire eater, a bride, a cage fighter, a TV host, and an impersonator, though thankfully not all on the same case. We can only assume the reason that Deadly Intent fared slightly better with critics than Fatal Conspiracy was that it was released first, and so reviewers hadn't become bored by its tired formula. With that said, it still wasn't received well. Although the lab sections in which players perform such tasks as cross-checking fingerprints and comparing the composition of samples to chemical compounds might sound interesting somehow, the puzzles themselves are repetitive and never challenging. Additionally, there's no player agency as it's impossible to fail the cases, so events always play out in the same way, and the graphics, as in the game's success, are a crime against nature. Critics and players alike also complained about how little had changed since the last Telltale CSI release. Some companies get away with releasing similar games over and over. Just look at the likes of sporting titles such as FIFA. But the difference between those titles and this one is that they have a solid foundation that brings players back time and time again. Deadly Intense foundations are about as solid as the rich tea biscuit that just fell in my coffee. What edged this title ahead of Fatal Conspiracy for us was the inclusion of more interesting characters and varied environments, which made all the difference, but didn't help the mind-numbing gameplay. Picking which to place higher in the rankings was like Sophie's choice if Sophie's kids had been a dog poo and a dog poo with glitter on it. Number 30. Law & Order Legacies PC Dun dun! That's the noise from the show. It's another primetime television entry. Law & Order Legacies comprises seven episodes released over a three-month period, each containing separate cases that link together by the end of the series. Much like the TV show, Legacies switches between courtroom drama and investigative work, forcing players to make important choices that, unlike those in the CSI games, can change the outcome of the case. Players must pay attention, as memorizing the evidence collected is key to choosing the right options and presenting the correct proof in the 
the interrogation segments. This choice and consequence system did help players to become invested in the game to an extent, though the decisions that had to be made were generally quite simple. It's clear that failure was not an option, as even if players did make the wrong choice, they were given the opportunity to replay scenarios until success was achieved. It's not all bad news, though, as the silver lining here is that Telltale would go on to refine this system for some of their later, more successful games. In addition to the flimsy player choice system, critics also took issue with both the terrible lip-syncing and the crackling audio that they claimed ruined their immersion. Clearly, Telltale was still using the same cheap microphones from Telltale Texas Hold'em. Many reviewers also felt that the graphics were too cartoonish, and whilst they weren't the worst they'd ever seen, they didn't exactly gel with the tone of the game. At best, Law & Order Legacies comes across as a pale imitation of games like Phoenix Wright's Ace Attorney, though it lacks any of the aforementioned title's flair. Once again, Telltale managed to create an exciting experience for hardcore fans of the property, but failed to give other gamers a reason to buy in. Alas, Telltale mustn't have looked back fondly on the title, as they delisted the game after allowing the license agreement to expire. Number 29. CSI Hard Evidence PC, Xbox 360, and Wii Hard Evidence is not an X-rated CSI spin-off, but at this point we almost wish it was, as it might be more interesting to talk about. This title is Telltale's second CSI game, and as usual, there are five cases to work through. One case, titled Burning For You, has players solving the murder of a racist taxi driver who burnt to death in his cab, while another has them investigating the murder of an entire band who were electrocuted to death. Can you guess what they called that one? If you guessed Thunderstruck, then you're wrong. It was actually Shock Rock. You know the CSI formula by now. Players examine crime scenes, talk to witnesses, interrogate suspects, and perform lab tests to find evidence. Like the other CSI games on this list, the lab test puzzles in Hard Evidence aren't challenging, and interrogations devolve into randomly clicking options until the game moves on. We'd liken the experience to a ghost train, on rails too short and full of terrifying monsters. Due to said rails, unlike later to Telltale games, there's no replay value, or any kind of value at all, to be honest. Positive aspects of reviews focused on the writing, which managed to successfully nail the CSI diction, but the same couldn't be said for the voice acting, which was weak overall due to the use of sound alikes to replace many of the TV show's stars. They may have sounded alike, but they couldn't act alike. Pretty much the only other praiseworthy aspect of Hard Evidence was that it included some improvements from the previously released CSI games, such as the 3D upgrade given to the crime scene kit, but otherwise it suffered from the same problems as Deadly Intent and Fatal Conspiracy. Boring puzzles, an unfailable linear storyline, and polygons so sharp you could cut diamonds with them. The Wii port was particularly disappointing, as the motion controls were only used in place of a mouse, which was a huge missed opportunity, as varied motion controls could have made the crime scene kit more interactive and therefore more immersive. Then again, using motion controls to mimic closing a corpse's eyelids might have been a bit too much for Nintendo to sign off on. CSI hard evidence, more like CSI hardly any chance of fun, got him. Number 28. Jurassic Park The Game PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. We ranked Jurassic Park the game as part of our Every Jurassic Park Video Game Ranked list, and where did it make it? You'll have to watch and find out. It did, however, fail to breach the top 10 of the best Jurassic Park titles, so it won't be a surprise to find it so low down on this list. Set around the events of the 1993 film, this title takes players to everybody's favourite holiday destination, Isla Nublar. Throughout this four-episode adventure, players move between different characters as they attempt to survive following the dinosaur's outbreak including a smuggler who's searching for the famous shaving foam canister from the movie that fans were anxious to learn more about. Universal advised Telltale that they didn't want another dinosaur shooting game, which is fortunate for us, since fast-paced gunplay isn't exactly Telltale's forte. What Telltale produced was a game involving difficult decision-making, with potentially grave consequences for some characters as well as quick-time events which shaped the story's direction. Whilst all of that may sound exciting, it's worth remembering that critics likened the implementation of these mechanics to a dumbed-down heavy raid. Additionally, critics found the characters uninteresting due to terrible writing and the constant switching between them disorientating. Also, failing QTEs often resulted in an awkward death animation, which may have been hilarious but utterly destroyed any tension that the writers may have otherwise achieved. It's easy to fall off the series at the first episode as the story builds too slowly, and although the plot does go to some interesting places, it's unlikely that players were able to stay awake long enough to experience it. A lack of branching pathways and a mere two endings also brought into question how important important each individual decision actually was. As though all these issues weren't enough, the game was plagued by numerous glitches and performance issues across all platforms, all of which is to say that Jurassic Park the game didn't live up to the incredibly high standards of the franchise. 
Number 27. Puzzle Agent 2 PC Puzzle Agent 2 is the sequel to Nelson Tether's Puzzle Agent, which was released the year prior. FBI agent Tethers is still fixated on the case from the previous game, so he goes back to the town of Scoggins, suspecting an FBI cover-up. Puzzle Agent 2 takes inspiration from Twin Peaks and Fargo, with a cocktail of quirky characters and a weird, comical tone. The story follows a linear path, with players choosing conversation topics from Tether's notepad. It closely resembles the gameplay style of the Professor Layton titles, as logic puzzles, which tend to be loosely related to the plot, are sprinkled throughout. Players can use chewing gum to purchase hints, and a maximum of three can be used per puzzle. Tether's does have a limited supply of the sticky stuff, but players can take lessons from Buddy the Elf and simply help themselves to more from around town. Disgusting. Puzzles must be submitted back to HQ to receive a rating based on how many attempts it took to get it right and how much gum was used, with fewer attempts and less gum resulting in a better rank. Puzzle Agent 2 was made in collaboration with Canadian cartoonist Graham Annabelle, whose art style managed to bring charm to the characters despite its simplicity. Unfortunately, the voice acting for Agent Tethers was rather stiff and unnatural, and the less said about the other voice actors, the better. There were over 30 puzzles in total, but many were too simple, and the more difficult puzzles were only hard due to bad design. One puzzle even required you to know the binary representations of numbers in order to solve it, which isn't something the average player will have any grasp of. Come on, Telltale, most of us still laugh at the number 69, so do us a favour and let's not assume any degree of knowledge in this field, okay? For those looking to really get their puzzle on, this game isn't going to be for you, which is admittedly misleading considering its title. Puzzle Agent 2 is instead best suited for more casual fans of the genre or those looking for a wacky mystery to solve. Number 26. Minecraft Story Mode Season 1 PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Wii U Minecraft is a game known for its immersive sandbox, which provides players with the building blocks to create anything, the only limit being their imagination. Given so much freedom, naturally, players wondered how a narrative could even work in such a game. Mo Yang answered that exact question by later adding the nether and then the end, and once the ender dragon is defeated, credits will scroll to signify the conclusion of the quote unquote campaign. Then somebody somewhere must have said, but what if Minecraft had a less ambiguous plot and the player creativity was stripped away? And so Telltale's Minecraft story mode was born. The first season is comprised of an initial five episodes with the further three released later as DLC. And in a rare move, Telltale allows players to choose the appearance of their protagonist, Jesse, though that is where the creativity ends. Yes, we know that choosing from one of six presets doesn't really count as being creative, but we must take our wins where we can with this one. So what is the story in Minecraft Story Mode? Well, to sum it up, Wither is coming. How original. Jessie meets a new friend, Petra, who convinces them to help her sell a Wither Skull, which is promptly stolen by a potential buyer in the hopes of using it to summon a Wither. They pursue the thief, but fail to thwart his plans, so they instead set out to find the members of an old group known as the Order of the Stone, the only people capable of stopping the Lovecraftian nightmare that is the Wither from destroying Overworld. Depending on player choices, the story can branch drastically, which does increase replayability. However, the developers had to spend time on every possible branch, leaving less less time to flesh out any one single run-through. This is an inherent flaw with the choose-your-own-adventure framework, but it's particularly noticeable here, resulting in a short total runtime. The title is presented with the energy and tone of a Saturday morning children's cartoon, which means that the characters are one-dimensional and the plot is a little too simplistic. With that said though, children are the exact audience that this game is aimed at, given Minecraft's popularity with the youths, so I suppose these points can hardly be described as flaws, can they? Well, either way, it didn't stop critics who complained that the game was lacking in depth and far too pedestrian. The major issue here, though, is that Minecraft really doesn't need a plot, and we can guarantee that whatever adventures you get up to in your own Minecraft world will be far more interesting than what's on offer here. Number 25. CSI Three Dimensions of Murder PC and PS2 Oh, look everyone, it's a Worst Games Ever title! It has been over half a decade since we played this one, though. Oh god so old, and we'd largely been able to bury it deep down inside, so massive thanks to our writer for dredging up the horror. Three Dimensions of Murder is Telltale's first CSI title, and they're best reviewed. They took over the license from 369 Interactive, surely in the hopes that they'd be able to produce higher quality titles than what came before. Good job, lads, really well done there. The gameplay apes the 369 format, where players visit crime scenes, question suspects, examine evidence in order to solve five cases, 
Come on, you know the drill by now. One particularly noteworthy case is First Person Shooter, which has players solving the murder of the CEO of a high-profile video game company who was shot and killed before the release of their big title. This entire narrative is a nod to Sam & Max Freelance Police, a LucasArts game that many Telltale devs worked on before LucasArts pulled the plug well into its production. Never cross a Telltale developer, they really know how to hold a grudge. The reason that Three Dimensions of Murder earns the prestigious accolade of Best Telltale CSI Game is because the title's that followed didn't innovate in any meaningful way, so whilst it wasn't a great deal better than its successors, it was at least the first to be mediocre. The graphics, investigative tools, and overall formula weren't exactly up to much, but at least critics hadn't yet grown tired of them. The quality of the writing is really the only positive standout for the series, and Three Dimensions of Murder is where it shines the most, but still, we beg you, please just watch the show instead. You'll be glad to know that this is the last CSI game on this list, so you can take the cotton wool out of your ears now. I, I said you could take the- Oh, it's no use, they can't hear me. Could we get some text on screen, please? Oh, lovely, thank you. Number 24. The Walking Dead Michonne. PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Now we enter zombie territory, and something tells me we'll be returning here often. The Walking Dead Michonne is a three-episode spin-off to Telltale's main Walking Dead series, and released between seasons two and three. This game ties in with both the TV series and the Walking Dead comic books, which are set in a hellish zombie apocalypse where the humans can be as much of a threat as the walkers. Comics-wise, this spin-off takes place between issues 126 and 139, exploring Michonne's whereabouts during her absence from the comic's main group. Early in the series, Michonne and her travelling companions are taken hostage by Randall, who is joint leader of a settlement alongside his sister, Norma. Michonne quickly finds herself in conflict with the settlement and is forced to fight to help her companions make it out alive. Gameplay has players choosing simple interactions or dialogue options, which affect character relationships and decisions further impacting the storyline. QTEs are utilised during action segments and can also affect the plot or cause fail states. The tense mood of the game is set early when Randall orders for Michonne and the other hostages to be interrogated, creating some genuinely difficult decisions as A, players don't know who to trust, and B, the choices are much more complex than binary good or bad options. Throughout the spin-off, Michonne is frequently haunted by her missing daughters in surreal, hallucinated scenes, a reminder that she is struggling emotionally, though rarely do we see these struggles affecting her in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, which makes her daughters' phantoms feel like plot devices rather than realistic traumas. The exploration of being a parent during a zombie apocalypse is a great premise, because we all know that parenting is the most horrifying thing in that equation. But by the time this spin-off was released, we'd already been through that experience in the first Telltale Walking Dead game. It was executed perfectly then, so this was old ground that the series didn't need to retread. Additionally, the plot had to rush in order to fit events into the allotted three episodes, so players got very little time to become emotionally attached to any of the new characters, which, considering that Telltale titles rely heavily on the player's investment in the story and said characters, was a major flaw, and the game had little to offer otherwise. The Walking Dead Michonne isn't exactly a bad game, but every Everything it attempts has already been done better elsewhere, making for an overall forgettable experience that only the most dedicated of Walking Dead fans should bother with. Number 23. Bone Out From Boneville, PC. CSI Hard Evidence, Bone Out From Boneville. These are definitely video games and not some form of adult entertainment, we promise. After all, we wouldn't want to invoke the wrath of the YouTube demonetization squad, now would we? Bone Out From Boneville is based on the first volume of the Bone comic series by Jeff Smith, a middle grade graphic novel from 1991. At the beginning of the game, Phone Bone, Phony Bone, and Smiley Bone have been kicked out of their hometown of Boneville due to Phony Bone's thieving tendencies. Try saying all that three times fast. They're then stranded in the desert, separated, and attacked by a swarm of biblical locusts, and along the way they meet a girl called Thorn and her terrifying granny, Grandma Ben. No, not that one. As though all of that isn't weird enough, things take a hard left turn into fantasy territory when the game introduces warring dragons, giant rodents, and the Lord of Locusts. This whole thing's like Lord of the Rings, but instead of hobbits, the protagonists are, quote, bone creatures. Ugh, horrid. Oh, and then there's also whatever the flip is happening here. I don't know. Out From Boneville is first and foremost a point-and-click adventure title, but to mix things up, there are also several mini-game-style segments, such as puzzles, a game of 
hide and seek, and a chase sequence. At the time of Out From Boneville's release, it was clear that Telltale didn't have their season structure worked out. The game was a single episode, which was followed by Bone the Great Cow Race only six months later, but it wasn't obvious that Out From Boneville was just the first part of an episodic tale, and so players at the time complained about its short duration. The main issue with the game, however, was the lack of meaty gameplay. It's clear that Telltale tried to keep things varied for players, but the Many games that were supposed to break things up were boring and simply felt like padding that tried and failed to flesh out the otherwise bare bones experience. <laughs> the best thing we can say about Out From Boneville is that the characters and story were quite entertaining. However, Telltale took these elements directly from the graphic novel that the title is based on, and so we can't give them too much of the credit. Still, they translated the novel into the gaming medium reasonably successfully, so A for effort at least. Unfortunately, Telltale may have aimed for a demographic too niche to make Bone Out From Boneville a huge success. But the 8 to 12 year olds with the patience to sit and read the masses of text would certainly have had a lovely time with the game. We suspect there were only about three children that fit that description, but still. Number 22. Game of Thrones. PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. Back in the 2010s, Game of Thrones was the most talked about show on TV, and was enjoyed by millions of fans all around the world, right up until its creators caught wind of those big Star Wars books and royally pooped the bed with the ending. But we're going to take you back to a blissful time before said pooping happened, as we look at Telltale's episodic Game of Thrones adventure. George R. R. Martin, tired of seeing his life's work reduced to terrible video game adaptations, wished for a studio capable of creating interesting stories to come along and save the day. Telltale, whose entire model was built around a story-first mentality, was the perfect choice. Telltale's Game of Thrones takes place between the third and fifth seasons of the show, and revolves around House Forrester and their woodland fortress. The playable characters are all from or closely linked with the Forrester family who found themselves on the wrong side of the war, and players must use their best judgement as different members of the family in order to secure their future. Locations and characters from the show are included, and the likes of Kit Harrington, Peter Dinklage, and Starbucks enjoyer Amelia Clark, amongst others, reprise their roles. As with other Telltale games of the time, players choose from actions or dialogue options that influence the story, and five times per episode, the player is presented with decisions that have major ramifications. These are tracked and compared with other player decisions at the end of each chapter, just to make you feel guilty for being in the tiny minority of people who let that one character die. You'll carry their soul as a burden for all eternity, and Telltale will remember this. For fans asking what if, there's also a rewind feature that allows players to go back and change decisions to see how things could have played out. Critics, however, commented that the story required too much pre-knowledge from the books, or at least the TV show, for Game of Thrones newbies to follow along. Numerous glitches and performance issues also interfered with the player's enjoyment of the game, and the incredibly dismal storyline made players feel like their influence was too weak to reach any conclusion that didn't feel like a bad ending. That's Game of Thrones for you. A second season was planned, but ultimately cancelled, along with all other games in production, when Telltale's doors closed. And since the revival of the studio, there's been no mention of a return to the world of fire and ice, so don't hold your breath for a sequel. Number 21. Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space – PC, Xbox 360, Wii, and PS3 Sam and Max Hit the Road was released in 1993 by LucasArts, who announced the production of a sequel, Sam and Max Freelance Police, in 2002. As mentioned in our CSI Three Dimensions of Murder entry, LucasArts canned this sequel inadvertently birthing Telltale. It must have been cathartic for the founding developers at Telltale then to have Sam and Max come home to them in 2006 in the form of Sam and Max Save the World. 
Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space was released only a year after Save the World, and follows on directly from it. Sam and Max's pet goldfish, Mr. Spatula, becomes evil and is assassinated by Santa Claus. Sorry, one minute, let me just double check the script. Becomes evil and is assassinated by something, something. Elves with machine guns, something. Vampire nightclub. Okay, you know, the, the story is completely bat flops, and you're gonna have to play it to believe it, so I'm not going any further with that. Beyond Time and Space aims to improve upon Sam and Max Save the World by utilizing an updated engine, which allowed for superior graphics and enhanced character animation. Telltale also added more mini games and better difficulty options, which included a hint system for struggling players. The writing was perfectly witty and absurd, which was on par for a Sam and Max title, and there were clear graphical improvements from the previous game. However, the Wii port heavily let the side down, with horrible stuttering making the game nearly unplayable in certain sections. PS3 and Xbox 360 gamers didn't have it any better, really, as the control scheme was as zany as the plot. Players had to hold a trigger to highlight interactable items, and then use the shoulder buttons to cycle through all the objects on screen until the intended one was circled. This might sound like a decent, if slightly inelegant solution to the conundrum of how to play a point-and-click game with a controller, but I promise you, when you hold the trigger and see 15 interactable objects flash up on screen, your soul will leave your body. Beyond Time and Space received a remaster in 2021 by Skunk Ape Games, who polished away many of the technical issues, allowing the core of the game to truly shine. If Telltale had only resolved these issues themselves, this title would be much higher on the list. Number 20. Nelson Tethers Puzzle Agent, PC and PSN According to Nelson Tether's Puzzle Agent, a puzzle research division exists within the FBI. As such, that means there's a perfect job out there for all you brain teaser loving folks, and all of those deadly mansion traps in Resident Evil and those insane logic puzzles found in the Monkey Island games count as work experience you can actually add to your CV, or resume if you want to get American about this. In Puzzle Agent, Tethers is the only agent within the puzzle division, so he's the man for the job when the White House's eraser manufacturer halts production and begins to respond to the president with cryptic puzzles. With the president unable to rectify any misspellings within his paperwork, and with Tipex apparently being out of the question, the case is top priority. Tethers, therefore, must visit the factory in the town of Scoggins to uncover the mystery. As we spoke of earlier, this game and its sequel take their cues from Fargo and Twin Peaks, which essentially means that all the characters are socially inept and incapable of providing Tethers with straight answers. Much of the game's humour comes from these odd interactions, as well as the absurdity of the unfolding mystery, which we won't spoil here. Gameplay is identical to that of the sequel, as Puzzle Agent is primarily a point-and-click title with short logic puzzles often shoehorned in to the events of the story. As an example, as players explore an area of the town, a nosy citizen provides exposition about the high school football team that used to help out in the window shop beside him, thrusting players into a quick connect the dots puzzle to help the football team practice their throws without breaking any glass. Feels like you designed the puzzle first, Telltale, and then worried about its relevancy to the story later. Critics were charmed by the game's art, characters, and humour, with Eurogamer pointing out that Puzzle Agent's style managed to distract players from its rough edges. Reviewers also felt that the amateur voice acting and odd writing, which might have been criticised had they been found in any other title, only added to the distinctive presentation. However, the gameplay was where critics were less forgiving, as they found the puzzles either uninterestingly simple or downright confusing, as some required a degree of trial and error to understand the mechanics at play. These aggravations were the focus of many reviews, but as we know, Telltale didn't learn from this for the sequel. Ultimately, Puzzle Agent is a cautionary tale about nailing the fundamentals before attempting anything else. Why spend so much time on the presentation and story of your puzzle game when you can't get the puzzles right? Number 19. Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 – PC, PS4, and Xbox One 
Season 2 of Minecraft Story Mode continues to focus on the adventures of Jesse and their friends, but this time Jesse and Petra meet up prior to a festival, only to have the space around them explode into a bottomless pit. If I had a quid for every time that's happened to me. They manage to escape, but not before Jesse discovers an enigmatic gauntlet that grafts itself onto their hand. The pair seek out a hero named Jack, who guides them to a monument that can help close the pit and free Jesse of the gauntlet, but they're attacked by an entity known as the Admin. Further details would be spoilers, but presumably the admin then shadow bans them from the Minecraft server and they're forced to contact Mojang to beg for their accounts to be unblocked. Gameplay employs the usual telltale mechanics, allowing players to talk to NPCs, choose from dialogue options, and make pivotal decisions relating to the game's outcome. But Telltale did add interactive elements here that are unique to the Minecraft Story Mode games, such as building and crafting and short minigame segments like battle sequences. The utilization of these gameplay detours kept critics' boredom at bay for slightly longer than Season 1 managed, but they still felt as though they were being not so gently shoved from one conversation to the next, as the minigame sections weren't implemented into the structure as seamlessly as they could have been. Critics also complained that the free build segment while quite enjoyable, were equally as tacked on. As creations initially appeared frequently across the game, but later uses of the mechanic mattered less and less, until the final episode dropped the idea altogether. The story received more praise than the previous season, as the threat of the admin proved to be more oppressive than that of the wither, and the added personality and backstory made the villain more memorable. However, many critics, including Game Informer, called out some of the meandering story threads as being nothing more than unnecessary padding. It feels like Telltale had the necessary <laughs> building blocks to create something interesting, but were unable to stack them together successfully, resulting in a game that's more fun than a base full of creepers, but less fun than being killed by skeleton archers. Number 18. Poker Night at the Inventory, PC. Okay, cards on the table. <laughs> cards on the table. This is another poker game, but it's much better than the last one, so do hear us out. Poker Night at the Inventory begins with a cinematic cutscene from the point of view of the player, as a lift carries them down into the Inventory, a secret club that plays host to the titular Poker Night. Players are then welcomed by Reginald Van Winslow, the sidekick to Guybrush Threepwood from Tales of Monkey Island, another Telltale title. Reginald provides some exposition regarding the history of the club, which was established in 1919 in response to the passing of the 18th Amendment, the prohibition of alcohol in the United States. Despite the removal of the amendment years later, the club stayed underground, both literally and figuratively, just in case the government ever changed their mind. Now, if your eyes just glazed over and you didn't take in any of that, then worry not, because none of it is relevant, as Reginald quickly escorts the player to the poker table, and the backstory of the club becomes nothing but a touch of world building to add to the atmosphere. At the table, competing with the player are Max of Sam and Max fame, Strong Bad from the Homestar Runner web series, the Red Heavy from Team Fortress 2, and Tico Brahe of the Penny Arcade webcomic. These characters will make passing comments throughout the game of Texas Hold'em, and the aim is to eliminate the opponents one by one until the player holds all the chips. Interestingly, Night at the Inventory had the opposite problem to Telltale Texas Hold'em. So whilst critics applauded the voice acting and comedic writing for the rival characters, they found the game lacking in the poker fundamentals department. The confusing decisions by the AI and core misunderstanding of certain Texas Hold'em rules made for a disappointing ordeal for poker enthusiasts. But unlike Telltale's previous attempt, this title had something to offer players that other online poker games games couldn't, an enjoyable single-player experience with the camaraderie of poker with friends. Did Telltale ever find a perfect middle ground between thrilling card play and entertaining company? Maybe later in the list, we'll find out. <laughs> Number 17. Batman The Telltale Series PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One 
Batman has received many adaptations since his comic book debut all the way back in 1939, and even enough Bat-centric video games to warrant a ranked list of their own. This Batman title benefits from being set in its own continuity, which means the plot doesn't have to fit with any existing iteration of the caped crusader, or follow any known storyline from the comics or otherwise. The game of course takes place in the crime-riddled city of Gotham, and sees Bruce Wayne struggling to assist his friend, Harvey Dent, in running against Gotham's corrupt existing mayor. Additionally, as though he doesn't have enough problems already, Bruce also faces accusations that his mother and father had suspicious business dealings with crime boss Falcone, which Bruce hopes to disprove. As Batman, players struggle with several villains that are plaguing Gotham, including Oswald Cobblepot, better known as the Penguin, Selina Kyle, aka Catwoman, and the mysterious Lady Arkham. Gameplay switches frequently between Bruce and Batman, giving Bruce a surprising amount of airtime when compared with other Batman games. Players can choose from conversation trees with different types of responses, allowing them to roleplay the type of Batman they want to be, within reason. The action set pieces are played out using QTEs, and investigation sections allow the player to use the Bat's tools to deconstruct crime scenes and progress the plot. The reception of Batman The Telltale series was mixed, as critics enjoyed the new investigation mechanics, but felt that other gameplay elements hadn't changed enough from previous Telltale titles, though they remarked that the QTEs were slightly more fluid than they had been previously. The narrative was somewhat divisive too, with some reviewers enjoying the story's deviation from Batman lore, and others claiming it to be sacrilege. The focus on Bruce Wayne in this title was seen to be a nice change, as some areas allowed the player to choose whether to confront the scenario as Batman or as Bruce, each facade with its own strengths and weaknesses. One common agreement, however, was that the game's technical polish was lacking across all versions, as many players complained of crashes and bugs. Batman The Telltale series offers a unique Dark Knight experience for those tired of the same old Bat formula, but if you're tired of the old Telltale formula, well, I'm afraid it's bad luck for you. Number 16. Bone The Great Cow Race, PC. The Great Cow Race is the sequel to Bone Out from Boneville, and starts where that game left off, with the Bone Cousins' arrival in Barrel Haven just in time for the Spring Fair and annual Cow Race. This time, players get to control all three of the cousins at different points in the story. Bone Bone, smitten with the human girl Thorn, must find a way to win her over. Phony Bone decides to steal the townspeople's eggs for reasons, and Smiley Bone is left to finding a convincing cow costume that will allow him to enter the race. And look, this is a spoiler, but I feel it's also important to point out that Phony Bone is punished for his egg-stealing crimes when the townsfolk decide to boil him alive over a cauldron. If that doesn't deter you from a life of crime, nothing will. The Great Cow Race ditches the previous title's minigames and relies entirely on silly puzzles and conversations. Players can switch between the Bone Cousins in order to assist them with puzzles, as sometimes one cousin may need to perform an action first so another is able to find the solution. The character switching and greater focus on puzzles went over well with critics, who felt the game was improved over its predecessor thanks to this added layer of complexity. However, it meant some experimentation was required, as players could poke around with the wrong bone cousin in situations where the solution was only obtainable with a different one, which generated some frustration. If the puzzles were too hard for players though, a hint system gave clues to aid a solution, and if the player was completely unable to progress, they would ultimately be provided with the answer, helping to avoid any sticking points. The short runtime was still an issue that critics echoed from the last Bone title, but this time Telltale priced the game more appropriately for its length, creating a lesser backlash. So, if your sense of humour is properly aligned, then this is a bona fide bovine adventure that could be a short but enjoyable treat. Number 15. The Walking Dead – A New Frontier – PC, PS4, and Xbox One a New Frontier follows on from The Walking Dead Season 2 with a five-episode adventure that introduces protagonist Javi. 
a former baseball player and gambling addict who finds himself trying to survive the zombie apocalypse alongside his brother's family. Harvey eventually bumps into series favourite Clementine, who saves him from harm and takes him to Prescott, a fortified airfield full of survivors. While the first few episodes of A New Frontier focus on Harvey's past and current situation, later episodes grow the scale of the conflict, displaying the complications of maintaining order on a community level in a post-apocalyptic setting. At times, the game switches between Harvey and Clementine, but the gameplay is largely unchanged from The Walking Dead Season 2, which means players will be pointing and clicking to examine the environment, choose dialogue options, and use items to progress. QTEs and time limits on key decisions are used to add pressure to players, and failure can result in death for the player character or NPCs. The unchanging gameplay was an issue for critics, who suggested that Telltale were resting on their laurels since this formula had previously proven so fruitful, and it seemed the studio was either afraid or incapable of improving or moving on from it. Holding on to the past also impacted the title's story, which garnered praise for Harvey's journey, but disappointment in Clementine's forced involvement in a game that didn't need her. As we mentioned, Clementine is a fan favourite, but her inclusion here felt forced and it hindered the pacing of Harvey's story, leaving too much to be crammed in and giving players no space to get to know the characters and no opportunity to grow to care about them. This time around, Telltale's use of their engine had clearly improved, but as with so many other of their contemporary projects, it was starting to show its age. A New Frontier needed to deliver a fresh approach to gameplay and an up-to-date engine, but it did neither, instead providing players with the opposite of A New Frontier. Although I suppose it's not like they were going to title it The Walking Dead Same Old Same Old now, were they? Number 14. Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures, PC and Xbox 360 Hey look everyone, it's animation's greatest inventor! No, not Jimmy Neutron. You better don those wrong trousers and get ready for a grand day out, because we're about to look at Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures. An adventure game, a grand one, with four episodes, each with its own self-contained story. I'm genuinely quite excited. To get the characters and story right, Telltale worked directly with Ardman Animations, famous for their work on, yes, the Wallace and Gromit shorts and film, but also Arthur Christmas, Chicken Run, and Flushed Away. Episode 1 sees Wallace start his own honey delivery service, called <sighs> From B to You. When he runs out of flowers, though, he decides to experiment with a growth formula to make those that he has much larger. Obviously, this all goes wrong, and the bees are instead blown up to a monstrous size, leaving both Wallace and Gromit to correct their mistake and devise a shrinking formula. The other episodes include a ruined plan to visit the Jewel of England, Blackpool, two murderous puppies called Pudgy Woo and Tinky Wee, and a stray dog, Slave Labour Racket. Oh, that's right, this ain't your mum's Wallace and Gromit, that's for sure. Oh wait, sorry, it looks like Wallace and Gromit has always been a little bit sinister. Never mind. Throughout Grand Adventures, players are able to play as both Wallace and Gromit, to move around and examine or use objects to progress the game. Players have an inventory that shows collected items which are used for some light puzzles, and topics of conversation can be cycled through when talking to characters, but progression is linear. The simplistic, old-fashioned adventure formula was praised by critics as harkening back to a golden age. The fun stories and bubbly characters charmed players and were a testament to Telltale's successful adaptation of the source material. There were no major complaints at all, really, just a few comments regarding the less-than-pristine audio quality and, despite the character models being well recreated in the game, their animations being slightly robotic. Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures is a solid outing that captures the charm of the duo perfectly. This game may not have aimed for the stars, or the cheesy moon if you will, but it was exactly what it wanted to be – a heartwarming dose of comfort gaming. Number 13. Back to the Future – The Game 
PC, PS3, and Wii. Ah, oh, Back to the Future, the franchise that predicted that by 2015 we'd all be riding hoverboards and rehydrating food to make it edible. Sadly, instantly expanding piping hot pizza has yet to become reality, and the closest thing we have to a hoverboard is these ridiculous things. Set after the events of Back to the Future 3, Back to the Future the game follows Marty McFly six months after seeing Doc Brown vanish to another time. Marty and his dad are left to clear out the Doc's possessions before his house is repossessed, and in doing so, Marty stumbles upon a DeLorean temporal replica that was created created by the lightning strike in the second film. Doc's dog Einstein, who we assume has been surviving on rat meat and chunks of carpet for six months, presents a tape to Marty, explaining that the duplicate DeLorean will appear when Doc Brown is in trouble, leading Marty on a mission to find and rescue him. Time travel antics ensue, including objects and characters disappearing in and out of existence multiple times. It also wouldn't be a Back to the Future adventure without a terrifying vision of a broken future, and in this game, it's a totalitarian walled society in America. How chilling and utterly unlikely. Telltale's take on Back to the Future is a rather simplistic adventure game. As Marty, players can move around to examine areas, solve puzzles, and talk to NPCs. There's also a hint system to ensure players don't get stuck, which critics found to be an excellent inclusion as they used it to quickly bypass the simple team tedious puzzles in order to progress the main draw of the game. The story, which they felt was as good as a fourth Back to the Future film could have been. Bob Gale, the franchise co-creator, helped Telltale craft the plot to ensure it was as authentic as possible. They certainly pulled it off, as the compelling adventure carried the game, as did the excellent voice acting of Christopher Lloyd reprising his role as Doc Brown, and AJ Locasio, who filled in for Michael J. Fox as Marty McFly, and did such a good job that many players didn't notice Fox's absence. Back to the Future the game may not have the most exciting puzzles or the most thrilling gameplay, but those looking for a fun, old-fashioned adventure game or a new Back to the Future experience really can't go wrong with this offering. Number 12. Sam and Max Save the World – PC, Xbox 360, and Wii Is now the time to ask why Sam wears a suit but Max is naked? No? Fine. As has been the case for many of the games on this list, the structure of Sam and Max Save the World is episodic, with each of the six episodes focusing on a different case. The first case sees Sam and Max investigating a group of former child stars, the Soda Poppers, who are causing trouble with their self-help video called Ibo. This video is designed to hypnotize viewers and turn them into puppets. The next case sees Sam and Max become TV celebrities as they take part in a daytime show, cooking and participating in a quiz in order to thwart a deranged host that is holding their audience hostage. Ultimately, they discover a teddy bear that was hypnotizing the host the entire time, and already you can see the through lines in the cases that link together and form a wider mystery to solve. Players control Sam and can click to move him around environments and interact with objects. He has an inventory which can be accessed to attempt to solve puzzles with previously acquired items, and although most of the puzzles are simplistic, some do require an elastic imagination to comprehend, which is in keeping with the game's wacky style. The humor in Sam and Max Save the World wasn't to everyone's taste. Many critics were fond of Sam and Max's comedy, but others, including including IGN, found the back and forth of the comedy duo became grating quite quickly. Who's right? Well, you'd be the judge. The game suffered from stuttering and numerous glitches at launch, and the Xbox 360 port didn't fare well, as the point-and-click genre usually requires pointing and clicking, which, last I checked, a standard controller doesn't allow, meaning console players were stuck with a clunky UI that hindered the experience. While far from perfect, Sam & Max Saves the World is a Sam & Max adventure game through and through, and it does right by fans of the comic book and the original video game which really is something considering it was the studio's first attempt at taking on the franchise. Number 11. Poker Knight 2 – PC, Xbox Live Arcade, and PSN Another poker game? You must be bluffing! That's also a poker reference. With two poker games already in the bag and a lull in their release schedule, Telltale decided to have one more crack at creating the perfect Texas Hold'em experience. Poker Night 2 opens in a similar way to Poker Night at the Inventory and begins with the player stepping out of a car and into an alleyway which is the location of the same famous underground club from the previous title. The atmospheric cutscene takes players through the Inventory Club, guided again by Reginald Van Winslow, and the players due to take part in the poker game are each given a brief introduction before gameplay begins. Poker Night 2 features more recognizable faces from existing franchises, including the gun-wielding dog Sam from Sam & Max, the knife-obsessed Brock Samson from The Venture Bros, the boomstick-toting Ash from The Evil Dead, and the fatally annoying Claptrap from the Borderlands series. Oh, and if that lineup isn't dangerous enough for you, the psychopathic murderous GLaDOS from Portal is the dealer. Might be best to throw this game if you value your life. This time, gameplay begins with a tutorial that teaches players the basic 
1986 of Texas Hold'em, with Telltale also opting to include an additional game mode where players can choose the Omaha Hold'em style of play as an alternative. The characters banter between hands and a new tactic is introduced where players can buy the other characters drinks to help discover their tells, which can then be exploited. This set of characters was popular amongst players, and critics applauded the writing and comedic voice acting, which elevated the game beyond Telltale's previous poker titles. One mode that was still missing from Telltale's poker series was multiplayer, which outlets cited as the reason why the game ultimately wouldn't have any legs as a serious poker game. Regardless, players were impressed by the improved AI, as much of the enjoyment came from working out what each character's tells were and using it against them when they attempted a bluff. This may have been Telltale's last foray into the inventory, but they ended their poker run with a diamond of a game, with spades of personality ensuring that the club will live on in players' hearts. More poker references for you there. Number 10. Guardians of the Galaxy – The Telltale Series PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It would seem that the one time the infamous voice of Mario, Chris Pratt, probably should have been lending his talents to a voice role, he didn't bother, presumably because he was too busy voicing literally every other character known to mankind. For shame. Chris Pratt for shame. Still, despite lacking its leading lad, Guardians of the Galaxy The Telltale series is still rather good. The Guardian's tale is based on the Guardians of the Galaxy comic book series, not the recent films, meaning their design is different to what some fans are used to. However, the crew consists of the usual suspects, Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, Drax, and Gamora. The game begins with the gang receiving a call from the Nova Corps asking them to aid in defeating Thanos. When they arrive, Thanos has killed the present members of the Nova Corps and has acquired a precious relic known as the Eternal. Forge. Then, without so much as breaking a sweat, the Guardians take turns to wail on Thanos like he's a purple punching bag. Simple dispatching of one of the MCU's biggest bads aside, however, there's more to the Eternity Forge than meets the eye, as it allows the user to resurrect the dead at a cost. Obviously, such a powerful device is well sought after, and it grabs the attention of Kree warrior Halla the Accuser. The Guardians must ensure the Forge doesn't fall into the wrong hands whilst deciding if and how to utilize its power themselves. For the most part, players control Star-Lord and examine environments, engage in multi-choice conversations with other characters, and make important decisions that decide the outcome of the story and the fate of the characters involved. Whilst the action sequences switch the focus to the whole crew as players respond to quick-time events. Guardians of the Galaxy The Telltale series utilized its varied cast well, as critics found the story to be fairly standard for a comic book adventure, but they were enticed by the strong personalities bouncing off each other. What really worked was the balancing act of trying to please each crew member despite their needs conflicting. Regrettably, some of this drama was dampened by the technical performance of the game. Critics pointed out that stuttering was common, especially during action-intensive scenes, and the dialogue would sometimes be read in the wrong order. There were cries for Telltale to adopt a new engine, as the cracks had already been showing in prior releases, and some sites, such as Polygon, marked the game down for emulating the same formula from Telltale's previous Walking Dead, Borderlands, and Batman titles. But overall, players enjoyed the planet-hopping adventures and were left clamoring for Gamor. Uh, not sorry about that one. Number 9. Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People – PC, Wii, and PS3 Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people might not be the best Telltale game of all time, but if there were an award for the most annoying video game title to read aloud, it would claim that accolade. Titles like supersonic acrobatic rocket-powered battle cars roll off the tongue by comparison. Following Telltale's earlier episodic style, Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people is served as five separate episodes with enclosed stories and is based on the Homestar Runner web cartoon. Strong Bad himself is a prankster in a red Lucha Libre mask and originally served as the antagonist before becoming the comic relief. The first episode of the game sees Strong Bad sabotage his rival Homestar to ensure he loses the Free Country USA tri-annual race. When Homestar inevitably comes up short, his life falls apart and he is forced to move in with Strong Bad, who has to devise a plan to be rid of his annoying housemate. The subsequent episodes are much wackier. Strong Bad starts his own independent country to avoid an email tax, competes in a battle of the band competition to earn money to fix his fun machine, shoots a movie of his own creation called Dangeresque 3, and the final episode has Free Country USA combined with the world of video games. Strong Bad's cool game is a point-and-click adventure where players must speak with other characters and use items to progress. Each episode has an arcade-style minigame, such as Snake Boxer 5, where players must fight round after round of snakes in a boxing ring. Throw Samuel L. Jackson in there and you've got a great idea for a sequel to a hit film. Call me, Telltale. There are also hidden collectibles 
collectibles and pieces of card that make up Strong Bad's own comic book, Teen Girl Squad. As with Telltale's other early adventure games, critics complained that Strong Bad's cool game didn't break any new ground for the genre, but it did manage to tread old ground successfully. The minigames, in particular, were a highlight of each episode as they were made with a surprising amount of love and care which left players excited for the next instalment to see which new minigame would be included. This title was a difficult one to rank, as while it received high review scores from critics, it has a rather niche appeal and a dated sense of humour. We recommend that you play Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people simply because the title suggests that it was made for you. Oh, see, now you got us being nice. Number 8. Batman The Enemy Within – PC, PS4 and Xbox One Following on from Telltale's previous capers with the Caped Crusader, The Enemy Within begins with Batman's investigation into the location of the Riddler. A puzzle box is left behind for Batman, and Bruce has Lucius Fox examine it only for a tracking missile called by a signal emanating from the box to explode, killing Lucius. Clearly, somebody isn't very good at keep talking and nobody explodes. Sorry. That's, that's inappropriate. Rest in peace, Lucius. An Arkham patient known as John Doe provides Batman with a tip-off to Riddler's location, so with the help of Conditioner Gordon, Batman apprehends the criminal. Before he can be locked up, though, Riddler is killed with a poison dart fired by a hidden assailant, and with his dying words he reveals that he is part of a mysterious group known as The Pact. With the help of John Doe, aka The Joker, Batman must infiltrate the group and uncover their intentions. Like many other Telltale games of the time, players must navigate conversations by choosing dialogue options pass quick-time events and make decisions that impact the fate of other characters and influence the outcome of the plot. The same unique features seen in Telltale's first Batman outing return here, such as the Bat investigation sequences where players can utilise the many tools in Batman's repertoire to examine a crime scene for clues, and sometimes they're given the choice to approach a scene as either Bruce Wayne or Batman. Additionally, although The Enemy Within can be played as a standalone game, if players have completed Batman the Telltale series, the previous decisions carry through into the sequel. A nice little bonus. Enemy Within technical performance improved from the previous Batman title, but not by much. Critics still complained about poor lip-syncing, stuttering and freezing, which Telltale should really have seen ironed out by this point. Furthermore, no improvements were made to the depth of decision-making, but critics enjoyed how tough some of the choices could be and how maintaining the Bat's unwavering principles became an interesting but difficult line to walk. Batman The Enemy Within shows a deep understanding of the character and translates it successfully to the video game medium, so if you're a Bat fan and like your game's story-driven, grab your Bat credit card and get yourself a copy. Number 7. The Walking Dead – The Final Season – PC, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One We come now to a title that survived a development cycle with more twists and turns than an M. Night Shyamalan movie marathon. The Walking Dead – The Final Season was the first game Telltale worked on following a large-scale restructuring but they only managed to release the first episode before the studio was suddenly closed. The second episode was complete and released only four days after the closure, but the last chapters of Telltale's Walking Dead were up in the air. Robert Kirkman, the director of the Walking Dead comic books, had his production company step in to finish the final two episodes of the season with as much help from ex-Telltale developers as possible, as he believed that Clementine's arc deserved to be complete for the sake of the fans. The final season does exactly that, as it follows Clementine after the events of A New Frontier in her journey to save AJ and teach him to survive in the harsh apocalypse by imparting the same wisdom she learned from Lee in in season 1. On their travels, Clementine and AJ end up surrounded by walkers, but are rescued by a gang of teenagers who have taken refuge in an abandoned school. As Clementine recovers and gets to know the other residents, she learns of a nearby group that threatens their small sanctuary. Players can expect the same gameplay elements from the previous Walking Dead seasons, including QTEs, dialogue trees, and branching storylines. But the final chapter also introduces collectibles, which can be found throughout each episode and viewed in Clementine's room. Critics and players alike were generally satisfied by the narrative, with Clementine and AJ's relationship being the highlight, as it recalled fond memories of her connection with Lee. The story also managed to tie up some loose ends from previous seasons and draw a conclusion for Clementine that felt earned, 
which was no easy feat under the development circumstances. Most criticisms were aimed at the lack of gameplay innovation and technical improvements from Telltale's last few releases, which realistically were likely the result of their continuously stacked release schedule. The Walking Dead The Final Season didn't necessarily require any innovation, though. It managed to stay consistent with previous seasons despite the disruptions behind the scenes, and it also tied a nice neat bow around the series while sadly serving as Telltale's swan song. Number 6. Tales of Monkey Island – PC, Wii, and PS3 this is the fifth game in the popular Monkey Island series, which has proven time and time again that once you try your hand at pirating, you get hooked. Right, someone get the writer on the phone and tell him he's actually really fired for that one. Tales of Monkey Island is set several years after the events of Escape from Monkey Island, with the same protagonist at the helm, Guybrush Threepwood. The adventure begins with Guybrush racing to save his wife from the clutches of his arch-nemesis and undead captain, LeChuck. Guybrush fashions the ancient Cutlass of Kaflu to defeat LeChuck, but assembles the pieces incorrectly. So when Guybrush stabs the captain, he's instead transformed into a human, and Guybrush's hand is infected with the pox of LeChuck, giving it a mind of its own. Knocked overboard, Guybrush then washes up on Flotsam Island, where he learns from the voodoo lady that the pox will infect the whole of the Caribbean unless it's absorbed by a voodoo sea sponge. He acquires a ship, sets out to find his wife and an explorer who is also in search of the magic sponge, and away the adventure goes. Like the other Monkey Island titles, Tales of Monkey Island is an adventure game with puzzle elements that must be overcome using logic or items found in the environment. These items are stored in Guybrush's inventory, with some combining to produce new ones like the aforementioned Magic Cutlass of Kaflu. The main difference between this title and its predecessors is that Tales of Monkey Island makes use of all three dimensions, and the control scheme has adapted appropriately, allowing PC players to use the WASD keys to move around. The main draw, however, are the characters, particularly the main cast, as critics fell in love with their charm and were engaged from start to finish, thanks in no small part to the voice actors and excellent writing. Puzzles can make or break an adventure game, and here, reviewers found them to be varied and just the right level of eccentric, which was in keeping with the Monkey Island tone. But the hint system helped to smooth them over. It wouldn't be a Telltale game without a few technical hitches, of course, but thankfully players didn't find anything game-breaking, resulting in Tales of Monkey Island being the perfect swashbuckling adventure game for seasoned fans of the genre and fresh landlubbers alike. Number 5. The Walking Dead Season 2 – PC, Xbox 360, PS3, and PS Vita Following on directly from the first season, The Walking Dead Season 2 continues the zombie adventures of Clementine, the young survivor from the last game. Clementine is left with fellow survivor Krista for several months as they attempt to find refuge in Wellington, Ohio. Walkers attack along the way and separate Clementine from Krista, but after being saved from the walkers by a new group, Clementine quickly settles in amongst them and becomes entangled with their myriad struggles and problems. Rebecca, one of the members of the group, is pregnant with a child whose father could be Rebecca's husband, Alvin, or her one-time fling, Carver. The group is beset by enemies on all sides, having to fend off the shambling undead whilst also being hunted by the crazed Carver and his men, as he intends to claim the baby due to his belief that he is the father and rightful guardian. It's as if the zombie apocalypse isn't enough drama for these people, honestly. As with the later Walking Dead seasons, players' save files from the previous season can be carried over to ensure their unique story and choices are sustained. Additionally, the game's mechanics are unchanged, with The Walking Dead Season 2 putting emphasis on player choice, placing difficult decisions and conversation trees before them to craft a personal narrative. As Clementine, players move around small areas to collect items and interact with objects. Action scenes mostly utilize quicktime events, with failure once again usually resulting in the death of a character or a game over. 
Season 2 received positive reviews, courtesy of the same elements that made Season 1 a critical success. The characters, voice acting, and writing were all superb, with the only letdown being that Telltale were unable to one-up themselves from the previous season. What critics felt was lacking was the interesting father-daughter Lee Clementine dynamic, which sadly wasn't replicated by anything equally as compelling or emotionally powerful. However, the story still received praise, as season one left Clementine in limbo between being a helpless child and a toughened survivor, and season two took players through that transitional period. Playing as an 11 year old, you are forced to make impossibly heavy choices that made Clementine's evolution to a a hardened killer seem sadly inevitable. Oh, poor sweet citrusy Clementine. Number 4. Sam and Max The Devil's Playhouse, PC and PS3. Hopefully you've not yet had your fill of crazed rabbits and badass dogs, because they're back again. This is the final Sam and Max title on our list though, so if you somehow have had enough of them, then you'll be glad to know we're almost done with the duo. Hang in there, you monster. The third and final Sam and Max game made by Telltale, The Devil's Playhouse, begins when Sam and Max learn of toys capable of psychic abilities called the Toys of Power. Okay, I suppose you'll need to buckle up for this one. Sam and Max first use the toys to send an invading alien general who was seeking the toys of power for himself back to interdimensional prison. A cult of mole men then informs Sam and Max about an artifact known as the Devil's Toy Box, which they've been guarding for years. Sam goes for a quick toilet break and returns to find the toy box stolen along with Max's brain. And from there, there's an attempted reanimation of an ancient pharaoh, alternate dimensions, clones, and ancient elder gods. Enough to make you ask, at what point does the remit of Freelance Police end? Unlike the previous Telltale Sam and Max games, The Devil's Playhouse gives players the ability to switch between Sam and Max, with Max gaming different psychic powers throughout the storyline, such as mind reading and teleportation that can be used to solve puzzles. The standard adventure game features are still here, talking to NPCs, storing items for use in the game world, and examining locations. And to make things easier for PS3 players, Telltale added a third-person control style, meaning the series was finally enjoyable on console. Even though some critics still complained the fixed camera could prove awkward at times. Reviewers found Sam and Max The Devil's Playhouse to be extremely well paced, which was down to the fact that by 2010, Telltale was well seasoned in crafting episodic experiences. Each episode gave players a fully satisfying, contained story, with enough plot threads left unanswered to keep them intrigued for the next chapter and the eventual conclusion of the overarching narrative. Additionally, the writing was as witty as previous entries, and the NPCs were also more varied and full of personality. All three of Telltale's Sam and Max titles are competent adventure games, but the series certainly grew more confident towards the end. So if you've only got the time to play one, The Devil's Playhouse is the one to go for. Number 3. The Wolf Among Us – PC, Xbox 360, and PC The Wolf Among Us is a prequel to Bill Willingham's very gritty and adult Fables comic book series, and therefore features a variety of characters and creatures from both folklore and fairy tales, such as those written by the Brothers Grimm. The game focuses on the Sheriff of Fable Town, Big B Wolf, a character analogous to the wolves from Peter and the Wolf, Red Riding Hood, and the Three Little Pigs. The story begins with Big B responding to a call from Mr. Toad, who has heard the woodsman making a racket in a drunken stupor. Big B breaks into the apartment to find the woodsman assaulting a prostitute. He steps in to protect her, allowing her to leave, but later that night, Big B and Snow White find her decapitated head on a doorstep and must work to find her killer in a city of sleaze and squalor. Not exactly a harmless fairy tale, eh? Well, if you'd read Hans Christian Andersen, you'd have known what to expect. Ugh. Like most of Telltale's later games, the events of the story are influenced by the player through conversation and QTE outcomes. Since Bigby is the sheriff, players must examine crime scenes by looking for and examining objects, with some items able to be stored in the inventory for later use. 
In The Wolf Among Us, the story did most of the heavy lifting, as the noir detective thriller theme was well executed, and critics enjoyed the real and lived-in fantastical world. This was in part due to the clever twist on fairy tale characters and tropes, as well as the histories of the Fable Town residents that were woven into the dialogue and interactions. The downside was that player involvement in the story was minimal, with very few decisions bearing much weight, leaving reviewers pining for an equally well-told story that was theirs to mold in a more impactful way. Regardless, though, The Wolf Among Us is an excellent argument for how a good story can prop up a game's otherwise mediocre mechanics, and we can't recommend it enough. If you do play, however, keep an eye on Grandma. You never know if she's a wolf in disguise. Number 2. Tales from the Borderlands – PC, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and Xbox One Tales from the Borderlands follows the adventures of Reese, a disillusioned Hyperion employee, and con artist Fiona, who, due to a series of unfortunate events, become thieves that trip over each other's ambitions. Reese, after being demoted and learning that his boss is planning to buy a vault key, seeks revenge by using a briefcase of stolen money to purchase the key first. He soon realizes, though, that the vault key is a fake, and was part of a scam set up by Fiona, her younger sister, and her mentor to make off with the cash. But when the briefcase is stolen, Reese and Fiona are forced to make an alliance to try and recover the dough. This leads them on a treacherous journey in search of wealth, or an even greater treasure. The art style is the same as other Telltale games released at the time, but it just so happens to link very nicely with Borderlands' cell-shaded style. Oh, sorry, it's not cell-shaded, it's inked. We called Borderlands cell-shaded once before, and the developers told us we were wrong. We won't be making that mistake again. Tales from the Borderlands follows the same gameplay trappings as The Wolf Among Us and The Walking Dead, making use of QTEs in action sequences and dialogue options to decide the outcome of certain plot elements. There are a few unique spins to gameplay in this title, though. Reese has a cybernetic eye, which allows players to scan certain objects in the environment, and cash can be found in some areas and used to unlock paint jobs for Fiona's vehicle. Some find the zany humor of the Borderlands series rather annoying, but for Telltale's interpretation, critics were united in their enjoyment of the writing, characters, and comedy. They were also surprised to find themselves emotionally invested in the main cast and struck by some genuinely touching moments. There were complaints regarding the mostly unchanged gameplay from Telltale's narrative library, which was beginning to grow stale, but judged in isolation, the gameplay was serviceable to the excellent storytelling. Another complaint, though, which rings truer now than ever before, was that the game ended on a cliffhanger. Despite the characters appearing in later Borderlands games, we're still without answers, and with Telltale's closure and Gearbox's new Tales from the Borderlands failing to provide any, we may never get them. Sorry, Ben. Number 1. The Walking Dead Season 1 – PC, PS3, and Xbox 360 the Walking Dead Season 1 follows Lee Everett, a university professor, as he is transported to prison. However, after a walker-induced crash, he then manages to escape, and it's not long before he finds Clementine, who has been camping out in her treehouse, waiting for her parents to return. Lee agrees to take on temporary guardianship of Clementine and help her locate her parents. The two come across various groups of survivors, some more friendly than others, and some more hungry than others, and Lee must overcome every horror imaginable if he's to return Clementine to her folks, though, admittedly, his his biggest obstacle seems to be gravity. The Walking Dead Season 1 represents the perfecting of a gameplay structure that began with Back to the Future the Game, Jurassic Park the Game, and Law and Order Legacies. Players are forced to react with button prompts or make decisions quickly in tense scenes which have an impact on the story. Some segments allow the player to examine an area and add items to Lee's inventory for later use, plus conversations with NPCs can build or break relationships depending on player choice, with the nature of these relationships leading to different outcomes in certain scenarios. When The Walking Dead Season 1 landed, it was a breath of fresh air, as despite narrative having seldom been at the forefront of the gaming medium at the time, Telltale managed to deliver a successful and emotional narrative heavy game. Players found the moral quandaries to be genuinely tough, and the adopted father-daughter relationship taken on by Lee and Clementine to be the biggest highlight. 
Critics were able to overlook the few minor technical issues and to celebrate what was a momentous release, with many outlets awarding the title a coveted Game of the Year accolade. It's unfortunate that Telltale were unable to improve significantly on this winning formula as reviewers and players grew tired of the same gameplay style and an increase in bugs in subsequent releases. Telltale was able to come closer with other titles that emulated the templates, but none ever achieved the same level of greatness as The Walking Dead Season 1. 